Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I decided to make a video series about how to design and build your own trailer. So I'm gonna start off by giving you a little bit of an insight of the engineering and the physics concepts needed to understand how to design a trailer. And then I'll go into uh, answering some of the questions like what frame size to use and the dimensions, etc. And there's going to be some interesting tech in this playlist that I'm going to compile all together. For instance, uh, how to properly load a trailer in order to get 50% of the tongue. Uh, how does that apply to, uh, to a, a fifth wheel trailer or gooseneck trailer? So this is going to be an interesting uh, series that uh, I hope you enjoy. So make sure you like and subscribe. And here we go. There's some concepts, engineering and physics concepts that we need to understand in order to use these tools to design trailers. So the first one that we need to understand is torque. So torque is assume you have a lug nut here and then you have a wrench trying to tighten this lug nut. So you make a, you press on the, uh, on the, on the uh, wrench or ratchet. And then this in turn is going to create a torque that is going to be applied on the on the bolt or the lug nut, and that's going to tighten it. So we take as a convention, if you're applying torque that is clockwise, this becomes a positive torque, and this is how it's normally written. So torque is equal to a certain distance, d, so how far away you're applying the force, so distance, multiplied by what is the amount of uh, force that you're applying? So the force is normally is is similar to weight. So basically, uh, it's just pounds. So basically, the distance can be either in in inches or in feet, and uh, the force is in pounds. And that's why the value of torque is inch pounds or foot pounds. So this is the first concept that we need to understand. And the second concept is basically something called the normal. So if you have a a, a mass a block of wood, for instance, on the ground. So this block of wood is going to have a certain mass or force that is going to be applied downward onto the uh, onto the air. So if uh, uh, and this is this is going to be uh, equal to uh, the mass, uh, certain pounds, so mass multiplied by uh, a value uh, a g. G is the gravitational constant, which we're not going to really use right now, but it's just to, to understand the uh, the vectors. So this is the vector here. The force vector is pointing downward onto the Earth. But the problem is that most people don't, don't know is there's another way of seeing this, uh, meaning that uh, the uh, even though the mass is going downward, there's something called the normal force, which means that the ground is pushing equally up because we must have that um, all the forces are are neutral. So if I, I can't have one force going only one way and not not the other, so that means if I if I if I am the block of wood, uh, that I'm gonna feel that the earth is pushing back up on me. Well, if I'm the earth, I'm gonna feel that the block is pushing down on me. So that's why there's some a force that's called normal. So the easiest way to to, to see that is if I have a a beam that is supported by two uh, supports on either side. Um, if I have a, a, a take the, the block of wood and I position it here, um, what's going to happen is this is the block of wood is going to have a certain uh, force that is being applied downward, and then this force is going to get distributed onto the two supports that I have. So this is actually the proper way of seeing it. So as you can see now, on the on the beam itself, the beam is going to feel three different. Uh, force vectors being applied on it. For the first one is the uh, the mass of the block, and and the second one is the normal one, and then the normal two. And obviously, as you can see here in this particular case, it's easy to see if the block of wood is right in the middle between the two supports. If this here is a assume it's a hundred pounds, that means n one is going to have fifty pounds, n two is going to have an, another fifty pounds. So if I shift now the block of wood on one side compared to the other. Obviously, this is going to increase, I don't know, possibly 75, 25. So this is, this is the other concept that most people don't understand is that when the beam is, is located on a certain support, the, it's the support that is going to be pushing back up onto the beam. So the force is upward, which is, which is the same case if I, if I have a trailer. So if we have a trailer here, uh, this is a side, side view of the trailer. So this is the, uh, the hitch at the front. So the hitch is going to be pushing down on the on the truck, 
uh, ball, and then we're gonna have here um, the axle. So these are the, normally the two positions for the trailer where there are supports. So the support here uh, can be, if it's a single uh, axle trailer, this is going to be the position of the axle tube. And if I have a, a tandem trailer, this is the, the, the position of in between the two axle tubes. So right in the middle between the two axle tubes. And obviously this here, the forces are going to be upward. And then the trailer itself is going to have forces pushing down. Obviously the weight of the trailer, so it can be anywhere really. Uh, the weight of the trailer is going to be pushing down. And then if I have a, a vehicle on the trailer, uh, each tire is going to be pushing down. So, so as you can see here now, um, these are um, the different forces being applied on the trailer. So how, where does the torque come in? Well, it's the same concept here. If you look, each one of those forces is going to be creating a torque around a certain point. And I can choose any one of those points. So I could choose a point, like for instance, I could choose the center of mass of the trailer. And it's going to be right in the middle if I want to. And I can, I can calculate the summation of all the torques from all the different vectors onto the, uh, the center of mass. So for instance, if... If a certain force is trying to apply, uh, it's trying to apply a torque that makes uh, the trailer platform want to rotate um, clockwise. So it's, for instance, the this tire here, the weight here is going to make it rotate clockwise. So this is going to be a positive torque. So plus the distance from here to here, V1 multiplied by the weights or the, the force being applied. This one here wants to rotate the trailer the opposite direction. So it's a negative, a certain distance D2, which is from here to here. So D2 multiplied with a different force F2 uh, here. And then if I look to this one here, it wants to rotate it negative as well. So this one is negative. Uh, D3, so D3 is from here to here, multiplied by a certain F3. And then this one here wants to rotate it positive, so plus D4 multiplied by F4. So in a static equilibrium case, static equilibrium means that there's absolutely no movement. So it's the summation of all the torques that are applied at any point that you choose. In this case, we chose the center of mass must be equal to zero because the trailer is effectively not rotating. So the summation of all these values must be equal to zero. Example of how we can apply uh, what we've learned so far. So the first concept is that we learned is that the summation of all torques must be equal to zero for a static equilibrium case. So if we look at a side view of a trailer, and this is the front of the trailer, so this is the hitch. So the hitch is applying a certain weight on the, uh, on the, on the back of the truck, and then the hitch of the truck is pushing back up onto the trailer. This is the, the position of the axle, the center position of the axle of the trailer. This is the axle of the trailer. And then we have the center of mass of the trailer. So obviously the center of mass can be in, it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle of the trailer. So in this case, I chose to have a 10 feet long trailer and I positioned the center of mass at exactly five feet uh, from, uh, from the, uh, the position of the hitch. However, not all trailers are like that. I'm just simplifying because sometimes a trailer could have a center of mass that is offset to the one side or the other. But for this case, let's just make it simple. So the center of mass is five feet, right in the middle. And then I'm trying to know where exactly to position my axle. So this is a value X, which I do not know. What is X? So X is equal to what using what we've learned so far. So in order to get 15% of the weight on the trailer. So if I have 15% of the weight, so if this is the center of mass, the trailer is gonna have a certain weight W. Uh, I don't have to know it in this case. So I'm gonna have 15% of that weight, which is equal to 0.15 W multiplied by W, which is the weight of the entire trailer. And then obviously on the axle, I'm gonna have 85% or 0.85 W. So let's apply all the torques must be equal to zero, okay? So first of all, I have here uh, three different force vectors. So I have one here on the on the uh, hitch, two, the center of mass, and then three is the, on the axle. 
So let's start by number one. So number one, remember that if a certain force vector wants to rotate in the clockwise position, so that means this here wants to make the trailer platform rotate clockwise, which is positive, multiply by the distance, five feet, multiply by the amount of force being applied. So the amount of force being applied is 0 0.15 multiplied by the entire weight of the trailer. So let's look now at the second uh, force. And the second force is, it is located exactly at the rotation center. So it's the distance is zero multiplied by the weight of the trailer. So I don't, I don't have to count it. it, it becomes zero. And then finally, uh, the force three, which is the axle is, is the ground is pushing back up onto the trailer platform. And this one uh, make the trailer rotate in the in the counterclockwise position, so negative. Uh, I don't know the distance, x multiplied by how much force is being applied, and this is 0 0.85 w. So now I can write that 5 multiplied by 0 0.15 w minus x, 85 w. So I can move the negative, uh, the negative to the other side, uh, so this must be equal to 0. So that means I must have 5, 0.15w is equal to x, 85w. So the w here cancels out. I don't need it. And then x is equal to 5, 15, uh, multiplied by 0 0.15, divided by 0 0.85. And this here, if I calculate this with the calculator, I, I obtain 0 0.88 inches, uh, not inches, feet, sorry. So this distance here is 0 0.88. So as you can see, this is approximately, so if I had to redraw my trailer here, so if this is the front of the trailer, and this is the back of the trailer, what I'm saying here is that in order to get 15% of the weight, I must have eight, five, 88 um, feet, and then here, whatever remaining. So, so as you can see here, that's why most trailer builders tell you, you must have 60%, you position the axle at approximately 60% of the uh, distance of the entire trailer from the front. So that means that it's, it is approximately, if, it is this, if this is 10 uh, feet long and I'm positioning the axle at 5.88, it's approximately 60 or 58.8%. So this is where this 60-40 rule comes in. And obviously, now that you understand the math here, you can just move things around. So for instance, if you want 20% of the weight on the front hitch, all you have to do is substitute uh, the 15 by 20, and this becomes here uh, 80 instead of 85. And then you get a different number here. So what if now the center of mass is not really located at 5 feet? It is located at 4 feet center of mass. So all you have to do is now change the four, the five here, and this becomes four, and then it will give you a different value. So now you understand the basics of how it approximately works, and and we'll see in another video what happens now if you position a, a load onto the trailer, uh, how does that add? I'll make an example of that. So I'd like to add one last thing here. What if, for example, in the same problem that we had earlier, but now we want to try to calculate what is the value x, so where do we position our axle, except now on our trailer we know that we have an additional weight where which is a spare tire. So recall that the distance from the hitch of the trailer to the center of mass is 5 feet, and then assume that we position a, a spare tire at 3 feet from the, uh, from the center, and the spare tire weighs uh, 50 pounds. Okay, so once again, same problem. So the summation of the, all the torque values must be equal to zero. So summation of torque must be equal to zero. So in this case, remember that we had uh, one force, two force, three force, and we're trying to make to calculate the force, uh, the torques around the center of mass. So in this case, everything stays the same. So let's start with one. So one wants to rotate the trailer in the positive torque. So it's plus uh, five feet. And multiplied by uh, 0 0.15 w and then um, we have the second one which is center of mass the weight at the center of mass so plus 0 multiplied by w the third one is still the same so it's going to be negative uh, x uh, feet multiplied by 
85 W. However, now we have a, a fourth, we have a fourth a vac, a force vector that is pushing um, in the negative direction. So I'm going to have a negative, and it's located at three feet, uh, multiplied by uh, the the weight, which is 50 pounds in this case. So in this problem here, I need to know what is the weight of the trailer in order to start making these kind of calculations. And the weight of the trailer, I, because it won't it won't cancel out. So I need to know the weight of the trailer. So in, but in this case, the this one cancels out because it's a multiplication by zero. And if I know that the weight of the trailer is 500 pounds, all I have to do is 0 0.15 multiplied by 500. And then once again here, uh, I substitute the W by 500, and this is uh, 50 pounds, and this will allow me to solve for X, and X is going to give me a different value in this case. And as you can see here, you can add different different accessories or objects or whatever. Like if you have a heavy door at the back, you can do the same. Heavy door is going to have this vector. If you want to add a generator, uh, you just... Uh, uh, and calculate it and then just add it as, a, as an extra term. So you can add as many terms as possible here and this will allow you to uh, um, to know what value of x you need to find. 